You're listening to Beyond the Stage from the Carpenter Performing Arts Center at Cal State Long Beach. In each episode, we introduce you to the artists, scholars, students, and arts professionals interpreting our world through the arts. Uh, I have with me Dr. Ray Briggs. Thank you for being here. As a saxophonist, Dr. Briggs has worked with John Clayton, Jeff Clayton, Benny Green, and Rufus Reed. As Assistant Director of Jazz Studies at CSULB, he has coordinated the Jazz Combo Program and teaches jazz history and ethnomusicology courses. Dr. Briggs is also Director of the Quincy Jones Jazz Camp and co-founder of FEED, which stands for Focus on Education, Equity, and Diversity at the Bob Cole Conservatory of Music at California State University, Long Beach, a bi-weekly forum that focuses on social justice, activism, and inclusion in the areas of music and music education. And we're going to talk a little bit more about that today. I, I want to talk a little bit about, about your, your teaching and what brought you to teaching. So I know you studied music education. What made you want to be a music educator and what brought you to being a, a, a professor and specifically a jazz professor? Um, well, when I was coming up uh, in high school, I went to a performing arts high school in Memphis and I began to study privately with a... Um, saxophone slash bassoon uh, a performer by a player. And he he encouraged me and instructed me, he said, you know, when you go to college and you major in music, he says, don't major in music performance. And his reasoning was not that music performance isn't a worthy pursuit, but his reasoning was, if you can play, it will show. Mm -hmm. Meaning, when you look at the professional music world, no one asks, Excuse me, before you do this concert, do you have a degree? Right. Right, it's, we know you're a great musician, so here's a platform for you to share your art with. You know? uh, and, I, and I'm saying this not to undermine the, 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 uh, the degrees of performance. Those, I mean, those are important because they prepare musicians. But I'm just speaking of my own development. So mm -hmm. my, my uh, uh, teacher said, said, you know, don't get a music uh, performance degree. Get a music education degree because that will always be able to serve you and it'll, it'll be a part of your arsenal. Mm -hmm. Like you're a musician, and so many musicians teach. Most musicians teach. Not always like you know, in a, a, a tenure track you know, position like what I'm, what I'm doing, but certainly they, they have students, they have people that they mentor. There's some kind of teaching going. All art has that kind of, men there's something that's built into it where you pass it along. People who are coming up come to you or they watch you or they ask you questions. Sometimes it's in a formal setting, sometimes it's informal. So by instructing me to do that, I thought, okay, I'm going to approach music in college as if I'm a performance major. So I'm going to practice like my you know, performance, performance major classmates are doing, but I'm taking all these education classes in, in addition to that. And when I graduate, I'm going to say I have a degree in music education, but if you look at what I'm doing, I'm also playing. Right. Right. And so... That, that's kind of how I got into music education. In terms of teaching, um, I started teaching uh, actually here in California. So I was getting my first master's degree in, in it's funny that we're talking about this performance stuff, but I actually, I do have a uh, master's degree in performance. Mm -hmm. uh, it's in woodwind doubling. So it's uh, you know flute, oboe, clarinet, saxophone, bassoon. Um, and while I was doing that degree at the University of Redlands, I was teaching for the community school. So it's uh they they part kind of give students grad students uh, a stipend uh, to teach students in the community. So I would teach for you know different. I would teach clarinet and saxophone. Uh, I think I did. I think I did clarinet and saxophone. And so I started teaching, but it's more like instrumental, like you know, individual uh, pieces. Um, but in terms of my my academic teaching, that didn't happen until my uh, second master's degree, and that was not in music performance. It was in ethnomusicology. This was UCLA. And so when I'm there, it was very much, um, you know, it's kind of, in other words, that's kind of that's kind of the normal path. As an ethnomusicologist, most end up in professor, you know, kind of uh, roles where they're going to be teaching. So I kind of knew that would be there, but my, but my um, assistantship was uh, being a teaching assistant. So mm -hmm. I had to, you know, open the classroom, help with some of the grading. Uh, uh, so I was already kind of doing it. But it wasn't yet my passion. I think what helped me develop this, the passion and the skills was one, seeing people do it on a high level. Mm -hmm. So one of my best uh, models uh, was my mentor at UCLA's uh, 
Professor Cheryl Keys. And she is incredible and she you know, really inspired me because uh, she, she was the first professor I saw who had the academic credentials, the knowledge, the, and the passion, and the relatability. I hadn't seen that before. I mean, I, I've, been, I, I've, I've had at that time two degrees, right? I had a, my, my, my bachelor's in music ed, first master's in performance, now I'm in my second. And I had, I had never seen all those things converge in that way. And to be honest, it was like another world opened to me. So I'm thinking now, you mean you can actually talk about, and her specialty is African American music, right? And so I'm thinking, you can actually talk about African American music, and it's a profession, and you can teach it, and you don't have to water it down, and you can talk about all the things related to it, and it's real, and it's, and it's beautiful music, and it's endless, and I'm it's like, wow, I want to do that, right? Yeah. And so uh, she mentored me, and she really helped me kind of get my uh, materials together, but also just watching her, and just kind of, like, kind of metaphorically sitting at her feet, watching her do it, and realizing, okay, I want to do this, right? And I want to do it on the level that she's doing it. Um, so from there, um, I actually got a call from uh, uh, University, um, Cal State University, San Bernardino. That was my first teaching mm -hmm. gig. And uh, they just called up and said, hey, we have an African American music class. Is there anyone there that could teach it? And um, they passed it to me and said, hey, you want, you want a gig? I said, yeah, sure. All right. <laughs> and they say the rest is history. So I started teaching there and I really started to learn like, the skills of teaching. But what I try to do more than anything else is connect. Mm -hmm. Right. Sometimes I think like, like music, you can focus on the mechanics of teaching, you know, the nuts and bolts of it. How do you present? How do you prepare, you know, PowerPoint slides? How do you like testing all those things you can, you can do. And it's, it's conceivable that you can do all the mechanics very, very well and miss the core of what teaching is about. Yeah. But in the same way as a musician, you can develop the mechanics of it, you know, all the technical aspects of playing the instrument, keeping it in tune, all those things you can develop at a very, very high level. But it's conceivable, and I've seen it, where there's no core. It, it, it's like there's, there's, there's rarely, I was speaking to someone earlier about, th about this today, I think sometimes in academia we focus so much on the mechanics of the craft, it comes to the arts, in terms of music, mechanics of the craft, we don't spend a lot of time on the why. Why am I doing it? Right? And so as we're talking about the mechanics of it, uh, and of course that gets people playing well and performing well and all that, but the why, like what's the purpose behind you doing this art? What are you mm -hmm. feeling when you make it? What are you trying to get people to feel when you express it? And so when I'm teaching, I'm again, I'm kind of like I'm treating it like, you know, like jazz. And so it's yeah. this idea of I'm going to perform, I'm going to do it through passing information, and it's going to be flexible. But there's going to be a, a goal in mind, but how we get there might change from day to day. Right. right? It might be a little bit different each time, uh, and we're going to discover it together. So, you know, in terms of wanting to teach, I think I am more inspired to do it now than I ever have been. And some of it has to do with different events in, in, our, in our world, that, and the things that I think, you know, education can really serve a great purpose here. Because yeah. uh, you know, obviously what we know and, and what we think we know has an impact on how we see the world, how we see ourselves, how we engage in the world. So I'm not saying that it's an end all, you know, be all to like world peace, no, no, no. But some things people do that I think are harmful to themselves and their communities out of ignorance. Mm -hmm. There's some things they do and some things that they might think because they haven't heard or been exposed to ideas that would help them expand their view and not you know, just kind of act in a way that, that shows uh, limited understanding and, and, uh, and sensitivity. Like, so I really feel like you know, education and teaching, I can demonstrate that and demonstrate it in a way that inspires students to look beyond the veneer of individual people that they might meet. Beyond the Stage is produced by the Carpenter Performing Arts Center at Cal State Long Beach. Views expressed by guests of the show or the host are their own and do not necessarily represent the views of the university.